In 10 years, where do you see yourself? Is it being rich and famous? Getting the job you always wanted? Paying off all your student debt? For drama college student and drama major Ethan Sullivan, it's simple, being happy. Check it out. So I started in the fall of 22. I graduated from Kalan High School, and both my parents already worked at Del Mar, so it was just kind of like a, oh, we're already here, you just come. So fall of 22, just rolled into it right after high school. And from then, um, what major did you decide? Did you know right away? I did. So I'm a drama major right now. I started doing theater my sophomore year of high school, and over the years, it just sort of started clicking. I was originally going to criminal justice. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, I, I found theater, and by my senior year, I had stopped taking my criminal justice classes, my law enforcement classes. I had, was taking three, four theater classes a year. So it just kind of, it just stuck real, real well, and so, so here I am. So switching from criminal justice to theater, I mean, that's a big jump. Yes, it was. Um, I don't know if my parents were more glad or relieved. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were sort of like a, there was a lot of hesitation with criminal justice. I wanted to do law enforcement policing. Mm -hmm. My parents were kind of like, oh, that's, it's, it's, a da it's a dangerous job. You don't know what's going to happen. It doesn't pay real well. There's dangerous people. So, oh, well, what about theater? And they're like, well, there's not a lot of job security. Actors don't get paid that much. A lot of them are star starving young artists. And it's just kind of like a, a back and forth. It's definitely a big jump, but I, I think it's more fits me, my personality. So did you struggle like with your family, like them just like having to come to terms with the fact that you switched from that to theater or I I don't I wouldn't say I struggled mm. um I guess there's, there's always a little bit of like hesitation when you when you when you don't know an environment um but I spent a lot of time with my parents like these are the things that I'm pursuing that are not just acting but on the production side directing construction uh there's aspects of electrical work and li little things that are like hey I can go into theater and I always have some way to make money. I have some way to make my living. So I, I would say just, just a little bit of hesitation. I and mean, there's hesitation from the beginning with law enforcement, right? But they've come to really appreciate and have a, a positive outlook for what I'm doing. And I think that's something that's not really talked about that much is like coming to college, everyone thinks that you're supposed to know exactly where you're going to be and mm -hmm. end up at. But you like making that jump. I mean, do you think that you would have made had that same realization or like been able to do it as easily if you were at, say, like a four-year school, or? I, I don't know. So, um, I guess it would be, I would say it would be easier at Del Mar, just because of the, the, the price. It'd be a lot easier to be like, oh, I want to, I want to change my major and try something else out. Um, that'd be a lot easier here at Del Mar. Um, I guess I was, I was lucky enough to come from a school where I was able to be able to do both those things and kind of find my niche before I came to college. Um, but I would, I would say for me to explore that at Del Mar would probably be, would, would have been easier. And I know you're very active in the school. I mean, can you yes. kind of name some of the clubs that you're participating in right now? So I am the current president of the Safe Space Club. I am the treasurer for Phi Theta Kappa Gamma Sigma. That is an honor, one of the honor societies at, on Del Mar. And I just recently, uh, got accepted into the, uh, NSLS. I don't know if I'm getting the acronym right. The a National Society of Student Leaders. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. No, either, but that, I think that that's, one. Yeah. Um, so out of all of those, what's the most significant one for you? I I, I I'm stuck between Safe Space Club and uh, Phi Theta Kappa. They're they're very. There's a lot I can do with both of them. Both with Safe Space Club being able to speak out for LGBT students. While at the same time with Fight the Cap, I also help students. Um, we, we do a lot, of, a lot of volunteer things. Uh, we did the, the food drive last semester. I just helped out with a uh, with a uh, Discover Del Mar at the Windward campus, and so I think those are those are both very important clubs that I'm in because I kind of I like to help people in whatever capacity I can. So those have both offered me that that opportunity. So elaborate more on the Safe Space Club because mm -hmm. I know that's something that you're very, very yes. like actively involved in. So yes. yeah, kind of talk more about that. So the Safe Space Club, um, we're, we're very small. It, it gets difficult because for myself, I'm very busy between Safe Space Club, Phi Theta Kappa, uh, being a drama student, we're, we're working a production right now, a musical that takes up too much time. <laughs> um, I work for the drama department doing construction. I'm a student assistant, so I just got out of my class working on our, our lighting system and setting up our lights for our next show. 
Um, but so we're very small. It can get very hard to organize some things. And my other officers were all, they're all just as busy, but we, we, we try to do things. I know we usually just had a mixture with Texas rising to try to get some more word out about things. That are Which happening is a voting Texas. Yes. club. Okay. Um, we just kind of had our, our mix with them to get some more information about the last election that just passed the primaries. Um, we try to host, um, uh, like kind of almost like lectures and type things, whole presentations for important things. Like I did one for uh, Black History Month. Uh, we try just try to get involved where we can, little bits, get information out there. Last semester we had a, we had a movie night. We did um for the Transgender Day of Remembrance. We had a we had a, a film sh- for over um ooh why am I blinking? I can't remember the name. Uh, the Life and Death of Marsha P. Johnson on Netflix. It was a very beautiful uh, documentary about what had happened with her and her journey. And so just things like that we can get into. Um, related but also not related, um, Safe Space Club has become a, a member of what's called uh, the uh, Corpus Diversity Council, which is a volunteer group that has recently just started, I mean, this past semester, uh, that is meant to network all of like the high school GSAs and the collegiate level queer support groups like Safe Space Club, or the Islander Pride Alliance at TAMU CC to try to just make that network to get to funnel the high schoolers into college, find their own groups, be able to uh, share resources, figure out what ev- what every school needs, what every group needs. This is thing that we're also trying to do as mm-hmm. we can fit it into our schedule. So, is there a moment for you, like as president, that's kind of rewarding? Like maybe a member opening up more, or do you have any stories about that? I. I I don't want to. I don't want to tell a specific story. I don't want to give yeah. someone's just like an example. Information, yeah, no, I totally get that. There have been several students who have come up to me and they'd be like, "Hey, I didn't know this existed. I didn't have something like this at my high school. I didn't know. I didn't have any of the other friends that were 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 LGBTQ that I could relate to or share my stories with or understood my experience." Um, so we, we've had several students who maybe they only come in for two or three meetings because they don't have a way to get to the meetings, whether it's a vehicle situation or a family situation, or they're just too busy in school and work. But we still have students who they just come in for once and they're just like, I'm just so happy that this is here for me and for other students. So that's, that's something we do get a lot, which is very like, okay, I'm doing something. I'm make, I'm, I'm reaching somebody and that's what's like making a difference. Me. Yes. So why do you think that Del Mar, I know you kind of already explained why, but like, why do you think Del Mar and like other schools really need clubs like this? So I, I think it's very helpful. Um, oftentimes, especially in those, those in, any, in any community, whether it's an LGBTQ community or you want to get niche into something more academic related, whether it's uh, science students or geology students or math students, whatever, whatever, whatever group you have, we identifying group of students. There's always a need for communion, community, to get together, to ha- have someone that shares your ideas, your beliefs, or the same same goals, and to make sure that you're represented in a, a larger area of the school. So I, 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 I always thought it was very important to be able to have clubs to allow students to be able to get together with people who are either like-minded or are willing to be open-minded or to share ideas, to share that it's in the sense of community. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's all, it's all, it's all about that community for me and making, and kind of go, I'm going on, on No, you're totally there. fine. But it, the, developing those senses of community for, for the different groups of students who may feel like outliers in the yeah. grander scale of a, of a school community. And helping you find yourself also yes. too, right? There are times where they can help, they can help students figure out um, their their individual niches. Like they're like for for us, it's more about your identity. Get more more idea of your identity, understanding the vocabulary, the language, um, history. If you're talking, maybe science students, maybe they need, they need help on their projects. Well, they can go to the science club. They can find their peers that maybe they're working on a similar project, similar research study that they can both communicate with and figure out together. It's all about being able, being able to support each other, to have that community, to have someone that you can always go, whatever it, whatever it may, whatever you may need. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad that you're a part of that, something like that. Um, so going back to you, I understand you're graduating soon, right? This, this semester, yeah. So where are you planning to go after this? 
So I have already applied and been accepted to Rockford University in Rockford, Illinois. It is a private school. I am going on a full ride tuition scholarship for acting and directing. So did Phi Theta Kappa like participating in it help you with that? So or... um, yes and no. So some schools and Rockford specifically do offer scholarships for Phi Theta Kappa members. I know Rockford originally offered me sixteen thousand out the gate. Just for, just, being a for member. just for being in Phi Theta Kappa. Yes. Wow. Um, the the full ride scholarship came from more as my grades as a whole, which I, it, it, it's not from Phi Theta Kappa, but you get into Phi Theta Kappa through your grades, your high GPA. So um, it, it definitely helped me discover more more uh, scholarship avenues. Phi Theta Kappa itself does offer their own personal scholarships that you can apply for. Um, which uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from some of them to see what is accepted, what wasn't accepted, and then I also have more I need to apply for this semester. But um, so many scholarships. Phi Theta Kappa has definitely encouraged me to continue keeping up my grades, and having those high grades is what allowed me to be able to get the opportunity for that scholarship. Okay. Wow. And um, finally, just where do you see yourself in ten years? In ten years, ooh, that that ooh, that's a hard question. Sorry, I put you on the spot. <laughs> um, people ask me that, mm -hmm. and it's there's a where do you see yourself? Where do you want to be? Um, what do you think is real? What is possible? What is just the dream? And I always try to be sort of realistic. Um, I see myself in ten years as being happy, and I don't. That, for me, that doesn't mean being the number one movie star. That you see in every movie, like uh, someone famous, like, like Dwayne the Rock Johnson or Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't, I don't want to be in every movie. I don't want to be a, a Broadway star where you see me in every musical. I can barely sing. Um, it's more of just I see myself. The way that I live my life is I do what is honest to myself, what I believe is right, and what is going to make me happy. So in ten years, I see myself as being happy that maybe maybe i am still in illinois maybe i moved to chicago new york la maybe i'm back in corpus christi after i graduate whatever it may be i just know that in 10 years i will be happy what a heartwarming message from ethan thank you so much for sharing your story with us today as always i'm your host aubrey kern editor-in-chief of the foghorn news telling you to stay tuned for the next episode